So, um, with no rating, this is where we're at. You, If you are still taking the Thamos quiz, push pause on that or just leave the window open. You'll come back and finish that later. You should have that finished, though. Um, but make sure you finish it because if you don't, it will go in as zero. If you finish the diagnostic and got a 90 or better, the practice is optional. But if you got a lower than a 90 or did not do the diagnostic, you need to be working on the practice. Uh, and we have a quiz on Friday, okay? Uh, tomorrow, I will do a workshop uh, talking about um, a complete thought or a sentence and those parts uh, of a sentence that you need to know for this. Because I know a lot of you are struggling on that. Maybe you need kind of a refresher on uh, what that looks like. So we will uh, do a workshop with that tomorrow. So we're going to move on to our chem chart, government, geography, and religion assignment. This is due by the end of the week. Now, uh, if you are at home, I gave you one of these, and you should already have it. So get that out right now, okay? Now, if you were absent on Thursday or Friday, and you didn't, or on Friday, and you did not get one of these, and you're at home, or you're at home today, and you're not in school, uh, and you're an A student. Long story short, uh, there is a digital version of this. If you go into, but I don't want you to use the digital version. Eventually, I want you to use the hard copy version and get that from me at some point this week. But you can start with the digital version, okay? And eventually, I'm going to take this up. And I'm not going to give credit to the digital version. I'm going to give credit to the hard copy version because I need you to have the hard copy, okay? So long story short, you can get started with the digital copy. So if you go into Civilization Materials and then go to Chem Chart, Government, Geography, Religion, open that up, and you can open it. But everybody in here is about to get one of these so you can have a hard copy. So everybody should be opening up. If you're at home and you don't have this, Whenever, whenever, uh, whenever you go to check somebody if they need it. Okay, so uh, you need a pencil, obviously, and if you need a pencil and you're in the room, raise your hand. I will launch one across. Oh, no, I'm going to give you one. Ever have a pencil? All right. So on this chem chart, I'm going to make this bigger. So on this chem chart, this is keyword, information, and memory clue. That's why it's called chem chart, K-I-M, okay? We should be looking at that right now. But we have the keyword, and here's our word bank up here. So those keywords will go next to the information, and then you're going to do a drawing that will help you to memorize those. Now, there are words on here that we have not talked about in this class. Like, we haven't talked about an autocracy or an oligarchy. We've you probably heard the word democracy before, but you probably don't know what a parliamentary democracy is or a confederate system, so on and so forth. There are two words on here that you we have talked about, okay? Looking at the word bank, anybody know what those two words are? Location. We haven't talked about those in the in reference to the five themes. They're the last two on the bottom right. Okay, monotheistic and polytheistic. We have talked about those. Okay, so usually what I would do uh, is give you all time to work as a group to figure these out. But because we're distance learning and um, I don't want to take a lot of time to do that and try to like have y'all pass papers around because of coronavirus, so on and so forth. I'm going to give you the first two, okay, which is if you flip over on the back, number 14 and 15 are polythe polytheistic and monotheistic, okay? So you write in 14, 15, 14 is polytheistic, and 15 is monotheistic. You can see it right here, polytheistic and monotheistic, which it might be reverse on your screen right now, but... That's 14 and 15.
So what I want you to do with number 14 and number 15, polytheistic and monotheistic, is I want you to draw a little memory clue in the boxes to the right. So let me show you what I mean by that, okay? So in these memory clues, we've talked about this with note taking before, you have two sides of your brain, okay? The right side is more of the artistic, uh, uh, look at the world and understand the shapes and the sizes and colors and things like that. You know, um, biology would say our right side of the brain is that way. Our left side is more of the logic, which would be like how the, you know, how to write the letters, how to put the letters together in order, the alphabet, what the uh, information in the um, definition is. So we're going to combine those and use our left side and our right side by drawing the picture that will help you to remember that polytheistic means relating to or characterized by belief or worship of more than one God. So I might uh, draw a picture. So I'm going to draw a little picture here where I've got someone and you draw whatever you want. I'm just drawing my own picture here. So I drew a picture like this. I've got a little dude, little stick figure that's kneeling down and praying because he's it's religion. And he's praying to the gods that have little you know, lines going off because they're glowing or whatever. I don't know, however you want to draw. And then I put poly in uh, parentheses because I, I want to remember that poly means many, okay? And I might even draw a line over to, like, all the different gods, okay? So poly meaning many, okay? So you don't usually put words into the memory clues. But I'm going to put that in there as kind of a hint that, oh, yeah, poly means many. Polytheistic means many. I can erase poly later as if I want to make sure I can just remember the word. Um, and then you're going to do the same thing for monotheistic. And you can draw whatever picture you want that makes you think of uh, a religion that only has one God. Okay. So I'm going to give you about a minute uh, to draw pictures for those. And then we'll uh, go forward and I'll show you how you're going to use this. I love that many of you all are already jumping in and have drawn and, and are trying to um, figure out the other words. That's great. I want you to do that throughout the week as we're going over these topics and looking at these. Um, so that should have been enough time for everybody to do a quick sketch. If you need to continue write, drawing a little bit after, that's okay. But let me show you how this uh, paper works, okay? So on the back here, I've got my words and I've got uh, my drawings. The cool thing about having this hard copy is I can now fold this along each column and I can use this as a study guide, okay? So this is great for terms. It's also great for like equations and things like that. So I can look at the definitions alone, okay? Or I can look at the definitions and pictures or I can look at just the uh, words in the picture to try to remember the uh, definition through the kind of words and pictures. I can just look at the words and kind of flip back and forth. So this is a really good study strategy. You can do your notes this way as well. Um, but chem charts make a really good. Uh, so for example, I'll show you an example here. I'll fold the back. 
where I can only see, so I can see the word polytheistic and I can see my drawing. So through that, I can say, okay, polytheistic, okay, that's right. That's a uh, religion in which they believe in many gods and I can check, okay, I got that right, okay? So really cool little study strategy. That's why I want you to hold on to it. That's why I want you to have a hard copy and we're gonna update this throughout, okay? So put that to the side, hold on to it. I don't want you to go through every single term right now because it's not gonna be a good way to remember. We'll go back and revisit these as we do different. So as we do religion, as we do geography, as we do government, we'll revisit this information, okay? So we're gonna back out of that. So just hold on to it. Uh, again, not due until the end of the week whenever we're done going over all of it. So you don't have to rush to get it finished. And we're gonna go into this assignment civilization religious research workshop i've had this on the agenda for a long time um mainly that's because i have been trying to uh do what we've done in the past and usually we'll like read the odyssey while doing these workshops and with distance learning i just found out that didn't work okay so i've kind of had to re-modify how i did this and we're we're changing as we go and girl sorry i'll speak back so y'all can see my screen but it says on the assignment, so kind of keeping the uh, chem chart to the side right now. And we're going to go to this assignment, Civilization Religious Research Workshop. And the instructions say, open the document template linked below, submit the document, and complete the work on the document. So most of y'all did this last week because I kind of started going over this. But if you have not done it yet, make sure you have. So you go down to... Uh, Open template, it'll open for you. Go ahead and hit submit my work. If I go into here, I can see the document. Let that open. So give everybody a minute to make sure they're on that document. It's up. Everybody hit submit on it. And I see a few of y'all have already started on it. So I'll go down it. Make sure you hit submit. We're good. All right, so let's look at this information together. I'll put myself over here, kind of out of the way. So the top of this says World Religion Workshop Assignment. Um, and one of your need to knows was how is religion going to play into our hero story? Uh, and, and I should take a second to kind of talk about we're still doing our project. And I did put in. Y'all can stay on that document, but I'm going to show you this really quick. I did put into the top here our nose and need to knows. And I've been marking off what we've done, okay? Like we've read the Odyssey and we've been examining it for like what a hero looks like in Greek culture and how the story works out and looking at those aspects. Um, and you guys have picked a civilization to research. But now we're moving on to this. What do we need to know about our civilization? Geography, government, religion. How are they going to play into our hero profile? So today we're really starting to look into that religion aspect. And to kind of uh, hit, the, hit the high notes, we're going to look at the five major religions of the world. Okay. Um, and kind of talk about those. And specifically, we're going to look at the three monotheistic religions. And what does monotheistic mean? Belief in one God, okay? So we're going to look at those three major and make up more than half of the world's population believes in these monotheistic religions. So let's look at what religion means. Religion can be explained as a set of beliefs concerning the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe, okay? So the first thing we notice is that it gives you the why of existence, okay? And whether you live in a household that is religious or not, um, every civilization that's ever existed has had religion as part of, of what it is. And we looked at those eight features of uh, civilization last week, and religion was, I believe, the third item on that list, okay? A, uh, a religion, because it gives people a cause, a reason, a purpose to live. And throughout history, uh, governments and these civilizations have used religion to control their people, okay? Whether that be a good thing or a bad thing that's kind of up to uh, the philosophy uh, teachers and, and educators and uh, professors to kind of discuss. Um, but 
it has been a tool that helps to uh, center and focus a why for your existence. Especially, so religion can be explained as a set of beliefs concerning cause, nature, and purpose of the universe, especially when consi considered as the creation of a superhuman agency or agencies, gods, usually involving devotional and ritual observances and often containing a moral code governing the conduct of human affairs. So we can see where this moral code comes into a, a part of a civilization because this is how you should live your life, okay? What do you think one moral code that is across almost every single religion that's ever existed? What's one thing you should not do? Huh? Okay, worship false gods might be one, but what's one that is kind of universal that you think? What do we not want to do to each other? You don't want to hurt each other. You don't want to kill one another. That is one of the first in, in almost every single religion. Murder is wrong. Okay. Killing one another is wrong. Okay. So that brings about control and a reason not to hurt one another and to live together. And the civilization will bring up what's another thing we shouldn't do to each other or shouldn't do to each other's belongings. Yeah, still, we should not steal from one another, okay? Uh, and you can look at um, every religion, you see that those are two big, don't steal, don't kill, okay? Or two huge moral values of one another, okay? And in almost every basic religion, we're going to find this out as we're researching, um, you are supposed to take care of one another. You're supposed to be a community. This all is part of the foundation of religion. Okay, and explain the why of our existence. We went over these words just now. We've been talking about them. Monotheism is a belief and worship in one God, and polytheism is a belief and worship in more than one God. Now, here, this is today, um, as we live today, um, our ratios. Obviously, this is an estimate. No, there's no religion survey that every human takes in the world, but this is a guesstimate. Um, and this is from the CIA, so U.S. government uh, intelligence agency uh, world factbook. OK, so we can trust these numbers are probably pretty accurate, um, you know, within a with a level of error. But the largest religion in the world is Christianity. And in this class, we're going to talk about why is Christianity the largest in the world. It has to do with the age of exploration and colonization and things like that. Um, and we're just looking at like the facts of history, not like the religion part of it, like why people are Christian. Um, the second is Islam or the Muslim faith uh, with 24 percent. Now, I will say that both of these religions have many sects or many parts of it. OK, and sex as in S-E-C-T. Um, so Christianity, what are some different religions within Christianity? You might know. Like Catholic, Baptist. Protestant, um, Pentecostal, yeah, yeah, y'all can start naming them. But there's many different, they all fall on the under Christianity. Islam is the same way, okay? Uh, they have Shiite Muslims, they have, um, oh my gosh, we're getting the other major one. We will talk about it tomorrow, but because um, we're going to cover kind of an Islamic, uh, Judaism, Christian kind of uh, conflict that we see in Israel. 16%, um, and this is the fastest growing uh, religious group, which is uh, unaffiliated or non-religious. Okay, they actually don't have a religion. Uh, this is the fastest growing group. Uh, Hinduism is 15%. Uh, Buddhism is about 7%. Judaism is 0.2%. But this is a major religion because it has played a major role in history. Okay. As we look at history, uh, the Jewish people have been part of many major events. And then 6.5% 5, 6 are other faiths. And this is around 4,300 different faiths. Okay? So many, many different faiths throughout the world is about 6.5%. Okay? Now, if we scroll down, we can see this map. It's kind of hard to tell. I'll, I'll zoom in. But the blue, red, and uh, kind of yellowish gold are Christian. Oh, they're Sunni and Shia. Sorry. Shiite and Sunni, couldn't think of a second ago. Uh, dark green and brown, Hinduism pink, Judaism is white. But you can see, we can see that the world is very diverse, okay? There's definitely sections 
that are uh, primarily a religion, but it is a very diverse uh, world as far as religion goes. We can see it's very, very different. You can see there are you know Hinduism in uh, India. We can see uh, the Muslim faiths are throughout North Africa, the Middle East, and some of, into Asia. Uh, Christianity um, is throughout Northern Europe, North America, South America. But we see Hinduism also in South America. Um, so, but long story short, we see a very, very uh, diverse set of religions throughout the world. Now, this video is one of a very interesting video um, that shows uh, how we get to this map. How we get to this map of religion is it, and we can watch this fit this following video showing how the five major religions of the world spread throughout history. So I'm going to open this up. You should be able to hear it. Okay, it's just music, but uh, you'll just watch along with us at home. Uh, you don't have to open it up independently. But I'll kind of go through it and pause it as we go. Let's take a look here. So you'll notice down here, we're starting at 3000 BC, okay? 3000 BCE, uh, so before Common Era, so about 5,000 years ago. And we see that red, and you can see it up top, it's kind of blocked right now because I'm moving my mouse. The red is Hinduism, uh, light blue is going to be Judaism, uh, Buddhism is yellow, Christianity is this purple color, and Islam uh, is green, okay? So we're starting here. In India, so this is the uh, so Hinduism is one of the oldest, or not if the, if not the oldest religions that we know of that still exists today, um, and it started in the Indus Valley region, which we talked about when we talked about civilization. We have these moist river valleys. We're gonna have this where it begins, and we're going throughout history. Let's keep going. You see it slowly starts spreading to India. Okay, so Abraham is a really important character in the three uh, largest uh, monotheistic religions, Christianity, Judaism, and uh, Islam. All three of these faiths are tied together back to this man, okay, Abraham, okay? All three of them break off from this one person. Okay, they're all connected. Uh, and we see this about 4,000 years ago. You see the Jewish religion beginning to grow in this area, which is known today as the Holy Land around Jerusalem in Israel. Okay, now what happens to Abraham is through scriptures, and you can see this in the Islamic faith, the Christian faith and the Jewish, uh, uh, Jewish faith that Abraham was forced out of his homeland, essentially, and God told him to go and find a land for the Jewish people, okay? And he finds it in this region. We're not going to go into the religion of it, deep into the religion, but this is why we see the Jewish faith. This is the history, according to the religions, why we see this pop up in this region. <laughs> Faith kind of shrinking and going out. Here. All right, so Buddha is born, and this is where we will see the beginning of Buddhism. And Buddha is kind of this uh, thought to be this uh, embodiment of, of God in a way. Um, and we'll be looking at Buddhism in just a little bit. So we hit year zero, and Jesus is born, lives, and is crucified, okay? So what faith is going to start from Jesus? Christianity, okay? So Jesus is born and lives in the Jewish, under the Jewish religion. Hey, if you're sleeping, got your eyes closed, it's being very rude. Sit up, sit up, sit up. Let's go. Um, Jesus is crucified, which begins the Christian faith, okay? Now, is this in that... Same location as the Jewish faith? Is it? Yeah. I see a few of y'all nodding. Yes, this is in the same location. This is 
kind of a big deal, okay? So now you have two face that are both saying this is where we come from, okay? Let's keep going. <laughs> All right, so what is this up here uh, during this time? Anybody know what empire this is? Not the Christian empire, the, the Roman empire. And the Roman empire around this time, it's about three to 800 BC, they, bec they become a Christian empire, okay? And you're gonna see in a minute, this purple is just gonna go boom, it's gonna go spread throughout the Roman empire under uh, Constantine, the uh, Roman emperor Constantine. But, um, what it just said there is that Jerusalem is sacked by the Romans, okay? So who are the Romans? If they're going to be Christians, who are they going to kick out of Jerusalem? Who was there first? The Jews. So they're going to kick out the Jewish people. This is why it's a big deal in history. They kick them out of the Holy Land, and they are removed. And we're going to see this boom of Christianity in Europe, in this area, in Africa, and Asia. is the uh, kind of father, the prophet, the leader of the uh, Islamic faith, the Muslim faith, Muhammad. And we're going to see Muhammad is born in Mecca, which is in uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, right along the Red Sea, uh, right down here. And this is the most holy place for the uh, Islamic faith. But they are going to stretch up. And what are they stretching up into? What is this area called again? The... Holy Land. So we're going to have Christians, uh, Jews, and Muslims all in that Holy Land together. And we're going to start seeing the clashes between Christians and Muslims. What do we call those? The starts with a C. Cru Crusades. Okay. So we're going to see these holy clashes. Should have covered the Crusades in middle school. Uh, if you did. We'll see Islam begins to spread. begins around the 1400s uh, we, uh, we see uh, exploration starting to go across and what what religion are they going to be carrying to the new world Christianity so let's watch this <laughs> of Africa. So we see fighting between uh, Muslims and Christians for land. All right, so following World War II, we see the state of Israel is established. So who had it first? The Jews. And then who came in and conquered the Jews? the Christians, the Romans, and then who came in after that? Islam, and now who's back? Not, not Christianity. Jew, well, Christianity is going to be back, but the Jewish faith is back. So do we think that this area is going to be a little tumultuous, a little crazy? Yeah, it's definitely going to be crazy because you keep changing who's in power, what religion, what government, what civilization is in power. We're going to talk about that a little bit more tomorrow, about how religion plays into this role. Of, of kind of causing this chaos. And you'll notice you have a little bit of Hinduism right down here. That is because during colonization, uh, India actually colonized a little bit of South America. And that's why I will say that little bit of Hinduism. But that is why we have this first map that we have today. All right, so going back to our little workshop here, and you can see that this map is similar 
to the one we just saw with how that religion spread and these big uh, events throughout history that are both fact based on fact and real events and also based, based on religious beliefs play a huge role in this. Okay. Now our part is this right down here. Okay. What you need to do for this assignment. Okay. And you're just looking at the basics, the facts of these religions. Okay. I'm not asking you to dive any deeper than just looking at their beliefs. Okay. And their like religious symbol and their texts and things like that. I'm not asking you to, to go any further than that, okay? Um, this is just a basic understanding to say, oh, okay, this is where they come from, this is what they believe, okay. Uh, so the first one we're gonna look at, uh, we're kind of going in order of the face that came, uh, that kind of spread throughout uh, the world like this, but we're gonna look at Judaism first, the Jewish face first, and what you're gonna use is this website. You can click on this link, it will open up a web page, the BBC, uh, this is a British website. It's very, very uh, reputable, uh, good website that we can use. But when you click on that, it'll pop up, and it'll have all these different religions. So we have a lot more than just the five major religions. We have these other religions. But we're going to look at Judaism first, okay? So if you click on this right here, and this will give you an extensive amount of information about the Jewish faith, okay? Uh, but we're just looking for the basics here, okay? So the first thing we're looking for is founder, beliefs, sacred sites, holidays, religious symbols, holy texts, uh, rites and rituals. So let's go in here and see if we can find this information. So if you look through here, you'll see these different headings like beliefs, history, holiday or holy days, holidays, uh, rites and rituals, texts, all of this is there. Most of this can be found under Judaism at a glance. So if we click on uh, Judaism at a glance, that'll open up. And we can actually find most of our information in this, just reading through this, okay? Um, so if I read through this information, let's see how much we can find just on this first page, okay? First off, right, right away, I see the symbol, the Star of David. So I could just copy this image and put that right into our into our uh, religious symbols so boom we can just put that right there okay so that's an easy one that was right away so you should be working on this with me Jackson you already got it all that's right I saw I saw don't distract them um, so we're doing our religious symbols so we go back in here and we start reading Judaism is the original of the three Abrahamic faiths we talked about that earlier that Abraham was kind of the beginning of these three faiths, which also includes Christianity and Islam. According to the information published by the Jewish People Policy Planning Institution, there's around 13 million Jewish people. This is a little dated uh, because it's only from 2007, okay? But pretty accurate. Most residing in the USA and Israel. According to the 2001 census, 267,000 people in the United Kingdom said that the religious identity was Jewish about 0.5% of the population. So we don't really need that information because it's not asking the population. But if we keep going down, oh, well, it does kind of tell us one thing. Who was the founder of the religion? Moses, good. But Abraham was the father, good. So let's keep reading. Uh, Judaism originated in the Middle East about 3,500 years ago. Judaism was founded by Moses, although Jews trace their history back to Abraham. Good. So we're going to put both of those in there. So the founder. I don't want it underlined. The founder was Moses. And a trace their lineage back. Abraham. Okay. So the founder was Moses, and they traced their lineage back to Abraham. Now, I don't need you to go into great detail on understanding who Moses was, but you can know that their founder was Moses. Okay. You're going back. Continue reading. Uh, Jews believe that there is only one God with whom they have a covenant. 
Now, if you don't know what a covenant is or who these people are, if you want to dig deeper, you can click on the words that are read and it will tell you what a covenant is. It will tell you the definition. Okay. The covenant between God and Jewish people is a thread running throughout the early parts of the Bible. God asked Abraham to do certain things in return for which he would uh, will take special care of them. The covenant between God and the Jews is the basis of the idea that Jews are the chosen people. So it's agreement. It's an agreement between God and the people. So this is a belief. So uh, Judaism believes in a covenant between God and the Jews. This is an agreement that he will protect them. Okay. So Judaism believes in a covenant between God and the Jews. This is an agreement that he will protect them. All right, so let's keep reading. We're going back here. In exchange for all the good that God has done for the Jewish people, Jewish uh, people keep God's laws and try to bring holiness to every aspect of their life. Let's keep reading. Judaism has a rich history of religious texts, but the central and most important religious text document is the Torah. So we have that as one of our questions. It's holy books. The Torah. Let's get a little more information on what the Torah is. You click on the link here. Now, obviously, you don't have to read write every single bit of this, but let's look at this. The Torah is the first part of the Jewish Bible and is central and most important document of Judaism and has been used by Jews through the ages. Okay, so the Torah is the first part of of the Jewish Bible and has been used throughout the ages. So all we're missing right now is rites and rituals, holidays, and sacred sites. The Torah is the first part of the Jewish Bible and has been used throughout the ages. Spiritual leaders are called rabbis. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one. Jewish traditional or oral law, the interpretation of the laws of the Torah is called the halakha. Spiritual leaders are called rabbis. I'm just kind of looking through, looking for information that we look for. Use worship in synagogues. So we can take this and we can put that under sacred sites or their synagogues. There we go. I'm going to put equal, a term we might understand more if you're not familiar with uh, synagogue is their church. Six million Jews were murdered in the Holocaust in an attempt to wipe out Judaism. We'll talk about that. And there are many people who identify themselves as Jewish without necessarily believing in or observing any Jewish law. So we got a lot from this. Let's go back and see what we're missing here. So we don't have ho holidays, so let's choose holidays. And there's a lot of different holidays, okay? You do not have to pick every single one. I would pick one 
So let's pick Hanukkah because that's one that maybe you've heard of or seen before. So we're going to uh, go back to re world religion and holidays. We're going to do Hanukkah. H A N U K K H or K K A H. And we're going to say what Hanukkah is here. Hanukkah or Chanukkah is the Jewish festival of lights. It dates back to two centuries before the beginning of Christianity. So, festival of lights that dates back before Christianity. Okay. Read a little bit more. Festival begins on the 25th. Day. The word Hanukkah means rededication or so I'm just going to take this word for word and I'm going to put quotation marks around it. I'm OK with that a little bit. You don't need to do that throughout this. But if you have something that's a really good text. You can do that. Oh, can I pause, Chris, Andy? OK. So I have Hanukkah, a festival of lights that dates back uh, before Christianity. And then the word Hanukkah means rededication and com commemorates the Jews' struggle for religious freedom. Quote that directly. That's okay. Okay, so the only thing we have left is rites and rituals. When we go back over to the BBC, go back here, and we're going to go to rites and rituals. And we can see that under rites, okay? And we can do Jewish baby rights or Jewish wedding rights. You can choose whichever one. I'm going to do wedding rights. And I'm going to read through here. And I'm going to go back in here and put wedding rights. And I'm going to read through here and find uh, some information. So Jewish wedding is one that cornerstones the Jewish life cycle. Although there are many laws and traditions associated with the wedding itself, other rituals take place in the weeks leading up. Um, so the wedding has many rituals leading up to the ceremony. And then we go before the wedding. Clothing. Let's look at the clothing. There are no specific traditional dress for Jewish wedding. Men will often wear black tie, morning suit, while women usually wear white dress. So similar to what we see as a traditional wedding um, in the United States. And then wear white dress. While men wear suits. Yeah, they here. They want this. And keep going. Fasting it is also a tradition for the bride and groom to fast on the day of the wedding itself, a symbolic statement of their kind of agreement with God. So the couple will fast the day of the wedding. And what does it mean to fast? Not eat. Yeah, you're not eating. And then the ceremony. And I'm looking for something specific. Ah, the veil. This is accompanied by the ceremony known as the Bedekin, uh, in which the bridegroom places the veil over the bride's face. This symbolizes the groom's intent to clothe and protect his wife. So this is kind of where we get the veil idea, okay? So the groom places a veil over the bride, symbolizing protection. Okay. So you see, we're just gathering a little bit more information, getting familiar with it. So. Uh, a fair amount of information here. It's not uh, paragraphs upon paragraphs, but just kind of looking over and familiarizing yourself. So I'm going to turn it over to you. To uh, and we got about five minutes, so we'll we'll actually work on this uh, some more tomorrow.
Um, and uh, you don't have to do this for homework. If you want to go ahead and knock it out so you have more time to work on other things tomorrow, that is fine. Uh, but we will continue working on this tomorrow uh, as a class and kind of working on it together. Um, so if you're at home, you're welcome to go. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.